Hi guys, this is Dr. Cosby. Um, today's uh, online lecture will focus on the uh, software or the online version of a bibliographic manager called EndNote. Uh, EndNote specifically will allow you to not only collect citations, but it will also allow you to store those references um, and to create an organized reference list at the end of a Word document. Before we move into the actual software, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the what EndNote is and why it's beneficial to you as a researcher. So first of all, what is EndNote? Number one, it is a bibliographic manager that allows you to uh, sort and store references, um, but also it allows you to store images, and most importantly, it will allow you to store um, PDFs, right? And so this becomes important when you're doing your online search and you yield a few full text articles and you want to actually um, store those PDFs in one space, right? And so EndNote will allow you not only to import the citation, but it will also allow you to save that PDF file in that citation as well. And so it's almost like it's a one stop shop in that you can go into the citation and then within that citation is also the PDF. Um, and so that's very convenient for the researcher. I think one of the most um, beneficial aspects to EndNote is this idea that it allows you to create these in-text citations within the Word document, right? Um, and this is going to allow you to focus more on the writing and less on the formatting um, and the numbering of, of your references. Uh, and then it creates this formatted bibliography um, or reference list, right? And so as you're writing your document, you would basically be um, inserting your citations. And as you're inserting those citations, EndNote is keeping track of that. And essentially what EndNote does is it creates this formatted bibliography or reference list at the end of your Word document. So some of you guys are cheering right now, right? You're hopefully saying to yourself, gone are the days where I actually have to type in each of my references. Enter into the phase of, of EndNote, right? This will save you tons of time, specifically more so for those of you doing um, either a master's thesis or a, a capstone project where you might have 20 to 50 references that you do not want to type in when you're done writing, um, you know, a 20 or a 30 page document. Um, in addition to creating the format bibliography, allowing you to um, cite in your text and being a great storage um, software, the other benefit to EndNote is that it allows you to directly import references or citations from bibliographic databases on the internet. Um, and so the ones that we we talked about in the discussion board most commonly were your EBSCO host, uh, your ProQuest, and Google Scholar, right? This idea that you could find a citation within Google Scholar or within EBSCO host and import that citation directly into EndNote. The beautiful thing about that is that EndNote will take that imported citation and put it in the correct format for whichever journal you are planning on submitting either your capstone project to um, or your master's thesis to. So again, that's one of the beauties of EndNote. So we're going to look at the pros and the cons to EndNote, and we'll start in this area here with what EndNote will do. EndNote will allow you to save your references um, in the same file, right? And so you'll have, you could have hundreds of references and they would all be in this software. You can group those references according to manuscripts, according to um, different projects that you have going on, according to different classes. And so it it provides the user really truly with this robust interface that allows you to do multiple things with tons of references, right? Um, it allows you to quickly insert references into uh, a Word document without really having to think about the, the ordering of the references or the um, formatting of the refer references. Again, one of the things I really like about EndNote is that it creates that reference list at the end of the Word document. So gone are the days that we have to type out our reference list. Um, what is really easy to navigate within the EndNote software is this idea that it will allow you to change from one referencing style to another. Um, and again, I think about when, when I was doing my dissertation, um, I had a manuscript, I submitted it to one journal, uh, it had its own referencing style, um, and it, if it got rejected, then I 
um, submitted it to another um, manu or journal where they wanted a different type of, of referencing style and so I just clicked the button and it automatically updated all of my references within my Word document um, and also in my reference list at the end of that document as well. And then the um, major reason EndNote um, is a game changer in my mind is because it can handle complex referencing rules um, and it takes out honestly user error and typing error. Um, some things that EndNote cannot do or won't do, um, it's not going to tell you what pieces of information you need to enter for any given reference. Um, and so one of the things that you have to remember is that you have to double check the reference list at the end of the Word document and then double check the citations within your actual Word document as well just to confirm that they're in the right format. Um, it's not going to warn you if vital pieces of information are missing. And it's obviously not going to replace your knowledge about referencing, right? It is a software, therefore it does have its limitations. And then last but not least, yes, EndNote does a lot of things for us. And yes, EndNote makes writing and data storage a lot easier for us. But please remember that it does not write your paper for you. Now that we've kind of had an introduction to the actual um, software of, of EndNote, I'd like to actually go into the application of, of EndNote. And so we're going to start and begin with the Ryan Library homepage. Um, and so from now, um, from here on out, what I'm going to do is actually walk you through the steps of actually signing into EndNote and opening up EndNote and showing you different tricks within the actual EndNote um, software. Okay, so when we enter into the Ryan Library homepage, what we're going to do is click this citation help EndNote link, and then that will load a new tab. And in that new tab, we'll scroll down, scroll down to the bottom center portion of the page, and we'll click on this blue hyperlink um, labeled EndNote, and then another tab will open. At this point, you'll be asked to sign in with your username and password which was assigned to you um, when you became a student at Point Loma Nazarene University. Once you have inputted your username and password you're going to click the sign in button and a new a new web page will open up and this web page will either ask you to create um, a new user account if you haven't already so you can click there if you haven't created an account or you can sign in if you have. And so in this case, I've already created an account. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in with my username and password. Once you sign in with your username and password, what you will see is you're going to be taken to what I call the EndNote dashboard. And so this is really the baseline or the starting point for the actual online software itself. Since this is the first time that I've actually logged into this particular account, a few things that I want to draw your attention to. On the far left-hand side of the page, what you will see um, on the bottom side is this thing called My References. Eventually, when you've started to import references, um, all of your references that you will have imported will kind of come, will come down and be in this category. Eventually, you'll be able to click on this link here, and all of the references that you've imported will kind of appear on this side of the screen. So for now, I don't have any references imported into my EndNote account. Um, the tabs on the dashboard are the collect tab and so the collect tab allows you to import references from online databases um, but it also allows you to do um, an online search and so we can click on the online search. When we click on the online search we'll be given um, a large drop down list of different databases and different schools um, databases that we could search. Uh, keep in mind that this online search option does not yield any full text articles. This is only a way to import citations for your actual bibliography. As I started to go through the software, I automatically were look, was, I was looking for the most popular databases. So EBSCOhost, ProQuest, PubMed, and Medline, um, and then also Google Scholar. And unfortunately, um, only one of the four databases that I just listed are, are actually in this drop down list. Um, and so I'm going to actually just go down to the P's because I know that PubMed is one 
the only one that's offered in the four that I listed. Um, you will also see that our university database is offered as well. So um, I could click that um, and click connect, but it doesn't work apparently right now. So I'm going to go to PubMed um, because I know that that one's actually working very well. And so you're going to click PubMed and then you're going to click connect. And what this is going to do is it's going to connect you to the actual PubMed database. And then from there, we can do, we can conduct a search. Now, again, we're conducting an online search. And the only thing the online search is going to yield would be citations that we can import. Okay. You're not going to get full text articles here. Um, for some of the, the, the citations that you get, you might have or get an abstract that accompanies it, but that is it. So let's go ahead and type in carpal tunnel. Um, and for my Boolean operator, surgery, uh, and then maybe pain, okay? And then what I want to do is I want to retrieve all records because this will give me a global approach to finding research articles that I need. Sometimes though you may want to limit the search or select a range of records. So let's say the search yields 9,000 records, but you only want to look at maybe the first 40 of those 99,000, then you would select a range of records. But for now, let's retrieve all the records. So you're going to click search. Um, and as you can tell, what's happening is that EndNote is searching. And what you'll see is that EndNote will continue to search in the background. So there's 98, 137. Um, and some of the things that I really like about the organization of EndNote um, is that number one, it organizes it by the most recent publication. Um, that becomes important in an evidence-based practice search, right? Because you want the most current literature that's available to you. So that's number one, you're always gonna have the most recent research articles um, published at the top of, of the list. But, you know, 913 articles, that's a bit cumbersome, right? And so let's just click on um, the, the second research article. When I click on that second research article, what you're going to see is just that it's the citation. So the author's name, um, the title of, of the, the manuscript, the year it was published, the journal. Um, so all of the information that would be associated with an actual citation, right? Um, it, again, some of the citations will also give you the abstract. So you can read the abstract and decide, well, do I really want to go look for this full text article? Some other key aspects um, within EndNote that can be pulled up from the citation. Um, number one is this thing right here called research notes. It allows you to take notes about the article. This article was, in was interesting really really went into treatment treatments for carpal tunnel so you're keeping notes within re each research article um, and then that's saved and then when you go back to that citation you can go back to your notes so if you type in notes then obviously you want to click save and save those notes the other thing that um, the citation does is it actually gives you the link to where that actual research article or abstract can be found so you can copy and paste that link into another tab to actually go into um, the PubMed database to see if in fact it's offered in a full text research article so if you're reading an abstract and you decide that you actually want to save um, that reference, you will have to add that reference to a group. Um, and so you can go here to the add to group, click the arrow, and you can either save the reference to an unfiled group or you can save the reference to a new group. So I'm going to save it to a new group. And that new group I'm going to call carpal tunnel syndrome paper. And I'm going to click OK. And so what you'll see is that the um, research article or citation has now been saved to my groups, the carpal tunnel syndrome paper group. So when I click that link, what I'll see in the carpal tunnel syndrome paper group is the article that I just saved, right? Um, and so from there, we can go back to the, the reference list if we wanted to. Um, or we could maybe go into um, the PubMed database and see if, in fact, it exists in a full text article. 
So that is the online search feature of, of EndNote. Again, it is not the most robust search by any means because you do not know if the full text version of an article um, is does exist. So my suggestion would be to skip the online search version in EndNote. Do your online searches within your 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 online databases, your EBSCOhost, your Google Scholar, and then import those citations and save those full text articles. And I'm going to show you how to do that next. So how do we import uh, citations into EndNote? Uh, so I'm already in Google Scholar, so we'll start with the Google Scholar database first. Um, I'm already in Google Scholar, and I've done a search for carpal tunnel and surgery and pain. A few things with Google Scholar that you have to do first. You have to go to this arrow here, click, click it, and go into your settings. And then you're going to scroll down to Bibliography Manager. And traditionally speaking, this will be clicked. Don't show any citation import links. What you want to do is actually click on the show links to import citations into. And you'll see a list, um, BibText, EndNote, RefMan, and RefWorks. Since we're working with the online EndNote database, we want to make sure that EndNote is selected. Once you do that, you're going to click the Save button. And what you will see down in your list that wasn't there before is this import to EndNote. Um, so I'm going to go with this yoga-based intervention for carpal tunnel, a randomized control trial, for two reasons. Number one, it has a full text article available. And number two, it, the citation itself can be imported into EndNote. So let's go with the first step. If we want to import this citation into EndNote, Okay, what we're going to do is click on the import to EndNote and what you will see down here in your download toolbar is this, this new file um, that is created called Scholar, we'll call it Scholar 1, right? What we're going to do is now that that's downloaded to our desktop or our downloads folder, um, we are going to go back into EndNote and we're going to go back to that collect tab. We're going to click on the import references and we're going to choose a file. And that file, remember we just said, was the Scholar New. It's in my downloads folder on my desktop. I'm going to click that file. I'm going to click open. And then from here, I have to select the, the correct import option for EndNote. Um, and so I happen to know that it is, it is called import or EndNote import. So again, we have to choose the correct import option. Um, in this case, it's going to be EndNote import. And then we're going to select where we want that file or citation to be stored. And since we're still dealing with carpal tunnel, I'm going to select the, the carpal tunnel syndrome paper group and I'm going to click import. And what you're going to see is that one reference was imported into my carpal tunnel syndrome paper group. So if I go back to my reference group, I now have two groups uh, or two, two research articles in there. I have the original one, which I did um, through through EndNote, and now I have the um, actual citation that I imported from Google Scholar, right? So that's pretty easy. So now how do we import that PDF file? That's a different story, right? So once we have the citation saved within EndNote, we're going to click on that citation, right? And then we're going to scroll down and we'll see something in the citation called attachments. The key thing to the attachments piece is that you have to go back into Google Scholar or any other database where that full text journal article exists is and you have to go in and click on that full text journal article you have to save that research article somewhere on your computer okay and then once it's saved you go back into EndNote click on the attach files and then you'll upload the file just like you would any other file um, attachment and so there's my my PDF. I'm going to click upload and now that upload is complete and so now what we have is the entire citation um, coupled with the actual research article 
um, that corresponds to it. And so how is this beneficial? Well, number one, we have the citation. So if we were to use this reference in a Word document, we would just click the EndNote feature and it would input that reference or citation into the Word document. Number two, uh, along with the citation, we also have the full text journal or journal article here as well. So we can click on this and it will open up our research article. We can read it again or do a quick reference if we need to as, as we're writing within our actual document itself. So we'll do one more example of how to import uh, a citation and also how to uh, save a full text PDF to the uh, EndNote library as well. So I've done a search with an EBSCO host um, for carpal tunnel and surgery and pain, and I've limited that search to full text articles only. Uh, and so I'll go with the first research article as well, and I'll click on the actual title. And when you go into the uh, research um, article, what you'll see to the right are the is the toolbar. And so when you get to the toolbar, what you want to click on is the export link. And so remember, we are only exporting the citation. This has nothing to do with the full text article itself. So what we want to do is a direct export to EndNote Web, and then we want to click Save. When you click save, you'll see um, obviously the tab is, is loading itself. And so the beautiful thing about EBSCOhost is that it actually uh, will import the citation for you. And so how do we see that new reference? Well, we'll go back to my references. Um, and in this case, because we can't tell it where to store that file, um, that file automatically gets stored in the unfiled list right and one of the neat things about EBSCOhost is that it tells you where your citation was imported from so how do we get that reference um, into the actual um, carpal tunnel uh, syndrome group so if you click on the reference um, and you click carpal tunnel uh, you will see that it now is located in the carpal tunnel group itself now now we need to import um, or save the actual PDF file. So again, we're going to click on the citation. We're going to scroll down to attach files. Um, and that's where we're going to upload our full version of, of the PDF file. But before we do that, again, tedious task of actually downloading the full version of, of the PDF file. So we're going to click on this um, PDF full text. And then to me, counterintuitively, the download PDF button is at the top of the screen for EBSCOhost. So you're going to click download PDF. And then once the PDF downloads, you're going to save that PDF somewhere, right? Um, and I'll save it as carpal tunnel manuscript. Save it to my de desktop just for ease. And we're eventually we're going to delete these, right? Because they're already saved somewhere. So when we get to the end note, we're going to attach files, choose the file, um, and then we're going to choose the carpal tunnel manuscript and upload. And while it's uploading, once it's done, we close. And again, now that PDF is associated with the actual citation itself. So as you can tell right now, we have uh, three, three references um, and some of those references actually have full text um, articles attached to them as well. So we spent the majority of the time in the My References tab um, and the Collect tab. And that's because honestly, quite honestly, um, you're going to be doing a lot of importing of, of references, right? And so it's important that you know how to do that. I've taken the two most common um, databases that you would use to import references. However, you can import references from ProQuest um, or CNAL or Sport Discus as well, and it's the same process. Um, and so now I kind of want to take you to uh, formatting um, because a lot of you guys are going to be working within Microsoft Word and you will want to cite while you write. Um, and so the first thing that you need to do is in the format tab, you have to go to the site while you write plugin um, and you actually have to download that plugin first. And so I've done that within Microsoft Word. So I'm going to go into my actual Word. So when you enter into Word, um, you'll notice something different 
on the layout. Um, normally you wouldn't see an EndNote tab, but once you've downloaded that site while you write, it automatically installs EndNote into your Microsoft Word program. So you're going to click on that tab and what happens initially when you first open up a Microsoft Word document is that you need to sign in with that username and password that you created um, when you created the EndNote account. So this is not the username and password for your Point Loma Nazarene email. This is the EndNote username and password that you created. So once you sign in, um, then it will authorize you to have access to the references that you stored in the online EndNote program. So it may take a while. Um, and try it again. Sometimes what I'm finding is that this software um, is, pretty, is pretty touchy. So once you're signed in, what you will see um, are all of the options that you have available to you um, through the EndNote toolbar. The major um, option is this Insert Citations option, but there are others. So if you need to go back to the online version of the software um, to import more references so that you can insert citations, you can do that. Um, if you want to edit citations, so change some things, add some page numbers, um, you can do that as well. If you want to change the style, the reference style, you can click this uh, drop down list. And so I'm going to go down to J A M A. So sorry for the fast scrolling. I'm just going to go down and see if they even have it um, on the list. What I'm looking for is the Journal of American Medical Association. And so I don't see it here. So I'm going to have to go back and probably add it in eventually. Um, so let's go with American Journal of Medicine. So here it is. Um, so I have changed my reference style. Um, and so now I want to go to insert citation. Now what's not intuitive to me and what took me a little while to figure out is that if I leave this blank, it's going to say find my references in EndNote. And so you're going to kind of assume that your references that you um, that you stored in your online software are not there but that isn't the case so go back to that insert citations and you're gonna have to type in uh, a keyword to help you find your reference list and so uh, my keyword is going to be carpal tunnel and when i click carpal tunnel the four references if you recall that i saved into the carpal tunnel group are, are listed here and so now i want to insert my citations i can insert one citation at a time if I want to insert multiple, I'll hold down my control key and click, and now I can insert two. So once I have the number of citations that I want to fall within the body of, of my document, I then click insert. And what you will see is that those references have now been inserted into my document, um, and they are now listed in the reference list. And what you will see is this reference list will always be at the back end or at the end of, of the manuscript. And so um, I accidentally put in this reference number one. Um, and so I'm deleting it completely. And so you'll see that my numbers didn't change. So how do I do that? One thing you can do is go up here to the update citations. Um, and what you'll see is that the numbers updated uh, both in the reference list um, and also in, in the document, right? And so I can continue to type. And then I can insert another citation. Um, and so maybe I want to insert this citation here and I insert that citation and it'll be number three. Now, let's say I forgot to put something at the beginning. Insert citation, click insert. Um, and what it does is it automatically will update your reference list for you, assuming that that reference isn't already used along the way. And so it's just a neat way for um, EndNote to keep track of your citations and for you not to have to worry about renumbering, numbering your references. The other thing that it does um, beautifully is it creates that reference list for you, right? So you're not worried about the reference style because you've already pre-selected um, your reference style. So all you have to do really is, you know, save your document. Um, you can open that document up and continue to work within and add new citations in as you continue to import those references or citations into your actual EndNote. 
So I couldn't complete this online lecture without going through um, how to use Procress with EndNote because so many of you in the discussion boards really truly said that this is one of your go-to uh, databases. So I've done um, a, a search for copper tunnel surgery and pain um, and I've limited my results to full text so I can show you how to number one um, import a citation and then number two how to save a full text PDF through um, Procress. So first things first, if we want to import a citation, the first thing that we need to do is click on the, cita the citation of interest. And then from there, um, when you get to the citation of interest, um, you will be you will look on the right hand side and you will see this more. You'll click on the more and then you'll scroll scroll down to this RIS works with EndNote. And then a an improv or a prompt will pop up and you'll click continue. And what you'll see is number one, there's something loading in the tab, but number two, that your download will begin um, down in the download bar, depending on the type of web browser that you are using. Once it's done downloading, if you click on the actual download, you'll be prompted to sign in with your username and password that you created for the EndNote account. And the beautiful thing about this is when you do this, the citation automatically gets imported into your EndNote account. And so we're going to wait a few seconds and eventually what you will see is a prompt um, will come on the screen letting you know that that, that citation has been successfully um, in, imported into your EndNote account. So there it is, one reference exported to your EndNote account. You'll click OK. You'll go back into your EndNote account, and right now what you'll notice is that I have five total references, but when I click on that link again, it will update itself, and you will see that I have six because that that citation has been imported from ProQuest. Um, and so I'm going to go down the list to um, the citation that I imported from ProQuest, and I'm going to click on it. Um, and so I want to, again, um, import or attach the PDF that's associated with my particular download. So I'm going to download that PDF and I'm going to then go back into my EndNote and attach the file. Okay, so we have to find the file. Um, all, of, all of my downloads go there. It's this file right here. I'm going to upload it and again I have an imported citation um, and then I have the PDF, the full version PDF associated with that citation in my EndNote library. So if I want to go back to uh, my Word document, I could continue to type. I could go back into insert citations, type in carpal tunnel again, and it's going to bring up obviously the new research articles or citations that I imported. And I'll click in insert citation. And if I wanted to, maybe I forgot to put something in the front of my document, I could type here. I could click insert citation, insert citation, sorry about that. Um, I could click insert citation in my Word document. And it should update the reference list and the order number. So notice what used to be four now is number one. And you will see that it will continue to collect the number of citations as you continue to embed them um, within your document. So I really hope this online tutorial for um, web-based EndNote was, is, and will be helpful throughout um, the remainder of your time here at Point Loma Nazarene University. Um, just some quick bullet points. And number one, you always want to refer to uh, your reference tab to see how many numbers or how many references you have. I think it's important as you move um, through the program that you either create different folders or groups um, for maybe each class that you're going to take, um, your capstone project, your master's thesis, or specific topics, and that you start to really um, import citations as you find them um, in your literature search, whether you're using EBSCOhost, Google Scholar, um, or, or um, ProQuest, whatever it might be, I just suggest that you import those citations. You can see that the import process is relatively easy. Remember to import 
um, um, a citation, you have to be on the Collect tab. And once you're on the Collect tab, you're just going to click on that Import References um, list. And depending on which database you're using, if you're using Google Scholar, you'll have to find the file. But if you're using EBSCOhost, um, if you're using ProQuest, those imported citations will go directly into your EndNote account and so that's way awesome right um, and the last tab that you're probably going to use most often um, would be the format tab specifically um, to to download the plugin I need to say this again that you must download the pro the plugin first before you can actually start to cite while you write or to um, embed citations within your Microsoft Word document. I found it easier to to actually close out of all Microsoft um, software before installing the plugin and it worked flawlessly. Um, and so those are some just suggestions. When you go into the actual document itself, remember the first time you enter, you're going to have to sign in with your username and your password that you created for the EndNote account. And then from there, just key things to remember is that you want to make sure you're choosing the correct style, whatever that style might be for the professor that that you have. Like I said most research um, journals are going to probably want you to um, reference in the American Journal of Medicine uh, reference style. However, I mean, the list, I mean, you can see is exhaustive, right? Like there's all kinds of different um, reference styles that you could potentially choose. If you have questions, please feel free to ask me or the professor of your course, um, as they should be somewhat familiar with how to use, if not the online version of EndNote, at least the desk the desk copy of EndNote. Um, uh, I think that's all I have for this online tutorial. If you have any questions, again, please feel free to either email me um, or to stop by my office during office hours. My office hours are Tuesday and Thursday between 7 and 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, looking forward to facilitating the rest of this course with you. Have a good day.